Gamers, gals, and my non-binary pals, have you ever wanted to play in a tournament ruined by the community ban list? Well, me and Zed slash Death the Striker decided that it would be a great idea to take our try-hard, sweaty, competitive mindset grind sets into the 5th rate duel slash Elysium Heart of the Cards event. Now, if you're not already doing so, please remember to check them out both below. I've linked their Twitches in the description below. And yeah, this is just going to be a sort of vlog-style retrospective of the event as a whole, what I liked, what I didn't uh, like, and yeah, just my overall experiences as well as the deck list and my performance. The Heart of the Cards tournament was a player-curated ban list where people could donate to charity in order to put cards from 1 to 2 to 3 as well as vice versa to ban certain cards. Now, the Heart of the Cards tournament overall, uh, the main gimmick outside of the player curated ban list was of course that players would start with only one card in hand. Uh, sec uh, the second player would still draw a return, so they'd have two cards in hand, but you guys sort of can get what I'm uh, getting at, where you're literally Heart of the Carding every single top decking, top deck gamer mode. Now, more or less, there were a lot of questionable hits. Uh, there were a lot of good hits, which I believe for this sort of event, like Alistair the Invoker, uh, how the Fibrax was pr was a pretty nice one, uh, but then there were a lot of questionable uh, bringbacks. Uh, a lot of cards like a uh, Graceful Charity, Guard Dragon, LP, Electromite was brought back to one, and uh, I, I can't really uh, justify this one, but Magical Scientist was brought back to three, and uh, yeah, that caused a lot of uh... special summon, special summon. Special summon? Special summon? Special summon? Special summon? Special So overall, the event was a huge success. I think we had a cap of 64 players, and the cutoff was top 8 for prizing, and then top 8 would just sort of play it out in single elim and more or less just sort of race to the finish. And yeah, we've got a lot of uh, interesting deck lists that I want to show off to you guys, and yeah, let's just get straight into some of them, including mine. So. Here we have my deck list. I decided to play Dragon Lake. Uh, massive shoutouts to uh, Zed slash Death Striker. Again, his stuff will be in the description down below. We decided to play Dragon Lake because we felt that with Guard Dragon LP as well as Link Cross back, it was arguably the most explosive and overall could just build the best board overall. There were a lot of other decks that you could have played in this format with cards like Painful, uh, Painful Choice at 3. A lot of people were thinking uh, Orcus was really good, which it was. Uh, Prank Kids have received no hits, Ad Ignis have received no hits. The main issue with that, with uh, those decks, was that sometimes those decks didn't 100% guarantee beat each other. Decks like Orcus would sometimes lose to, uh, what's it called? Orcus would lose to Dragon Link and have to play a really grindy mirror. Prank Kids would have a really bad Orcus matchup because Double Battle Butler isn't always like guaranteed to just uh, win you the game on the spot, as well as them having problems with OTKing, so if you've already burned through that battle butler, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, and yeah, but Dragon Link just had the best overall matchup, it had the most explosivity, you can kind of see that this deck is uh, kind of nuts. But yeah, the overall game plan with this deck was more or less to end on Spheres and Herald of the Arclight. Uh, Spheres would just be our normal summon interruption for cards like Magical Scientist and just any sort of generic play starter. Uh, prank kids cards, Attic Nisters, blah blah blah, and of course, um, we have the Herald of the Arclight just acting as a really good general in the gate, as well as um, kind of a floodgate in, for, in response to cards like Painful Choice, where they can't really dump a lot of Orcus monsters, uh, because, you know, they just get banished. I think it's actually illegal, I'm not too sure. I have no idea, but anyways, uh, this card is old as shit, but yeah, let's just break, go through the card by card, as well as like why we played them. Uh, three black metal, one red eyes darkness. Um, we just kind of played as many two uh, two dragon board builders as we possibly could because red eyes just brings back the black metal after you banish a striker dragon. Uh, Chamber dragon maid as well as the one hospitality of course just brings itself back when you link it in striker dragon. Uh, same with parlor and tidying. The reason why I played the parlor tidying package at like a very small amount was because I believed in the build with painful choice. Uh, this just becomes an extremely explosive play where you could go like, uh, if they give you Chamber Dragon Maid, you could bring back Parlor and Parlor gets on Tidying, and that just gives you even more extension. Uh, that just gives you an extra body, which actually uh, lets you even summon LP off of the, uh, not summon LP, summon DMZ Dragon off of LP since you already have the extra materials for the Saryuja. You've already got just like a lot of stuff going for you, and it's very likely that you're going to draw a Dragon off the Saryuja draw. 
But yeah, there are even uh, scenarios where you can bring back Parlor, uh, or like bring back Chamber Dragon Maid, and you can add Tidying, which actually came up in one of my matches. It was really good. Uh, three Rocks Rose Dragon and one Basil Rose Shoot. This is just Monster Reborn, and this is just Rocks Rose. It's, uh, it searches a Reborn for itself. Crazy. Uh, three Magical Scientists, without a doubt, the best card of the, in the deck and of the format, and probably going to be one of the best uh, slash worst design cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, for the rest of human time. Uh, three Bubble Man, uh, one Bubble Man, and three Emergency Call. I didn't really like Emergency Call. I mean, I didn't really like Bubble Man, because in this specific build, uh, there were a lot of bricks, and that I kind of wanted to just minimize the amount of uh, bricks that I was like sort of seeing, and just sort of minimize the chances of drawing into like multiple Bubble Man. Even and even though I know it is like searchable and it's literally just Pot of Greed on legs, uh, I just kind of didn't really want to brick into like drawing another E Call or a Bubble Man. Uh, three Valor, three Maxi. Valor turned out to be really good this format. Maxi turned turned out to be really bad this format because if you Maxi your opponent, turns out uh, they they end up if it ends up mattering, um, your opponent could just still build this massive board, and you're still kind of fucked because in this format you don't play extenders. Like maybe the only extenders like bringing back with Basil, and maybe going into like painful dump some. Dragon made cards. Like, there are no extenders in this deck. It's really a. Uh, Maxi was definitely the weakest card in the deck, in my opinion. Outside of the Garnets, of course. Uh, three Pot of Greed, three Painful, one Graceful, one Upstart. Um, pre all is pretty self explanatory. Upstart can draw me into the power cards. And we've got some super duper hard Garnets. We've got one Dragoon with the Divine Lance that we're searching off the Romulus. One Phalanx that, uh, if you hard draw, it ends up being completely worthless because it's Phalanx. Like, fuck. Uh, yeah, you. The entire combo is very heavily reliant on the Romulus uh, Divine Lance combo with Phalanx, and if you can't resolve that combo, then well, I guess you're kind of fucked. Uh, one DMZ Dragon, and of course one uh, Dragon uh, Buster Destruction Sword. Uh, you don't really need this package. I just kind of wanted to just throw shit at the wall and just be like, whoa, I just want maximum because maximum explosivity because I don't want them to summon anything. I don't want them to have any fun. Uh, for the extra deck, we've got one Dark Fire Dragon as a Magical Scientist target, as well as a level 4 or lower uh, Dragon Monster for the Guard Dragons. Uh, one Twin Photon Lizard and one Cockatiss. The reason why they're all different names and why I didn't just run like three Dark Fire was because Nightmare Scenarios, where maybe in some niche uh, scenario, you may need a Link uh, Scientist plus these three dragons into Zaryuja after maybe you've burned through like Atum and Romulus already. Um, it's not really realistic, but it's really funny. A Tum, you just overlay Cockatus and Photon Lizard into it and gets you a special from deck. It's nuts. Uh, one Herald of the Arc Light and one Metal Martial Metal Marcher. Martial Metal Marcher is going to be bringing back the Dragoonity Phalanx for Dragon Link combos, and Herald is just a really good card overall. You're usually going to be summoning Herald with Rock's Rose Dragon, which is a level 3 tuner and a level 1 Link Cross token. And for Link ones, we've got Striker Dragon, of course, just amazing card overall for Dragon decks for being able to self revive. Uh, one Link Cross, really dumb. One Pisty, one LP, because it's really dumb. Uh, one Protector Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman, just to help set up zones, because you're usually going to have to, again, sort of have some pretty fucky zones. And this also dumps a uh, Dragon Buster, so that uh, was like 99% of the reason why I wanted to play the DMZ build. Uh, one Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres, I would play two if I could, but in this particular build you kind of can't. I would of course change a lot of stuff going forward, but we'll get to that at a later date. Uh, or time. One Romulus, combos, one Saryuja, uh, draw Magical Scientist and you win the game on the spot, and one Boral Sword Dragon, because fuck it, it's Boral Sword Dragon. What are you gonna do about it? Cry? Piss your pants? It's Boral Sword. Uh, the amount of times I've just made Boral Sword OTK'd was fucking uh, like, a, like a ton. Three Lancia in the side deck, because I expected a lot of Striker Orcist, and there were a lot of Striker Orcist, but I never saw this card against them. Uh, same goes for the uh, reasoning for Skullmeister. Uh, Goddess of Sweet Revenge was really funny in theory. Um, you could put this in against like Prank Kid. You could put this in against uh, Zodiac. Uh, you couldn't really. You could put this in against Orcist, kind of, but they just protected with Dengirsu and you were kind of fucked. Uh, and like the effect didn't really do anything. Like maybe you could summon Magical Scientist. But yeah, Goddess of Sweet Revenge. If you like, if you're like I don't know, up a game, and your opponent's playing a blind second deck, you could maybe side this in. But yeah, this card is not amazing. It's really funny though in the specific format. Uh, one Panker Tops, because it's Panker Tops. One Harpy's Feather Duster. Uh, just a bunch of dumb uh, broken one-ofs to just deal with dumb bullshit. 
uh, one heavy storm. Uh, surprisingly, a, not a lot of people, if any at all, play like trap decks like Paleozoic, Eldritch with Grass, uh, Raigeki, Darkle, my dog's doing ape shit, and one Snatch Deal. Snatch Dealing Magical Scientist for game is really, really funny. But yeah, overall, my tournament report, I actually made top 8. I ended up going 4 2 in Swiss. I lost in the rest, last round against Thet, uh, Thetis, and I lost a round against Labrat. Uh, both of them. Uh, ended up making top four. Uh, top uh, Labrat ended up getting second place, and Thetis ended up getting fourth place. So congrats to them both. But yeah, uh, I can definitely say that every single game that I lost, I just bricked. Uh, and by bricked, I mean I opened like uh, like a hard garnet, like destruction sword, and they opened a whatever it's called. They opened something super nuts, which is just a starter <laughs> in this format, more or less. But yeah, going forward, I would probably change the maxis for Ghost Rogers, hits Magical Scientist a lot harder, as well as take out a lot of the super duper hard bricks. Probably take out the DMZ stuff for more uh, like consistent starters, etc, etc. But yeah, let's take a look at these. Let's take a look at the next couple of lists. So here we are uh, with Neshi's list. He made top eight. His friend also ended up uh, playing the exact same list we played in round five, but we took the dub against them. And you could kind of tell that a lot of people had some really different theories going into the event, and a lot of people thought, hey, uh, it's going to be a very slow format with a lot of uh, slow, minute gameplay, because a lot of people, I think a lot of people thought that there was going to be like control matchups and that you would have like turn back and forth gameplay. I really disagreed with that, and I think that my sort of logic going into the event was more correct, in a sense where people were just kind of building boards, like really really fast, and nobody was playing that slow control game. No idea how Nashi got uh, top 8 with this list, uh, with that factors consider with those factors uh, in consideration, but hey man, uh, man got the top 8 dub, and yeah, you can kind of see just playing every single way to get to Magical Scientist, 3 Sangan, 3 Witch. Just sort of like setting those, you can maybe link Sangan into like All Mirage or like Witch, I don't, or like uh, this card Artemis. I have no idea if this is even like real. Uh, and a lot of like just uh, board breakers, which I don't, f which I feel like were really good for going second formats. Uh, not a going second formats, really slower formats. But this was definitely not a slow format. But cards like Panker Tops, Torrential Tribute, Lightning Storm. Uh, all like pretty okay cards. One for one was pretty questionable. King Kabayo was also pretty questionable. All the discard to graveyard hand traps with the dimension shifter uh, also had some confliction, but again, that's just me. It's a one card format, who fucking cares? Cards like Chalice. But yeah, overall, like a uh, pretty interesting list. Like, you can't really deny that this was a list with like a lot of a. Uh, with a really core might, with a really core, uh, what's it called? A core concept that you could have uh, applied to this event. I just feel like the uh, if this event was way too fast to sort of justify playing this deck. But congrats to Neshi for the top eight. And finally, we have uh, Mike slash uh, Trishula TTV. Uh, he actually, when I actually brought this event up to him, he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna break this fucking tournament." And the and he ended up just like you know getting bored and not doing the event. I think he like went to sleep or something because he didn't want to pull an all nighter. But more or less, he developed. Uh, Prank Kid FTK. Prank Kid was already a really good, uh, really strong deck for this event because you could always consistently end on like Battle Butler Pass. But there were specific boards where if you open Scientist, exactly, I believe, you could quote unquote FTK your opponent by Gumblar hand looping them for two. And the way you would do that was you would summon like Gumblar and you'd have Bow Wow Bark and you'd have a Link Cross token pointing to the Gumblar. And you would bow wow add back two prank kid names and then you, you would have like one additional card in hand that's usually just like an unknown or maybe just a card that you recycled who knows and then you would use a link Kribo in graveyard summon it back to the gumblar zone and then you'd uh, just like discard two cards and basically literally just hand loop your opponent the reason why i didn't end up playing this deck was because i have a seeding hatred towards hate prank kid players as well as the fact that this deck had a really bad matchup against orcus because if you ended up hitting any graveyard enabler out of their hand, which they kind of play a lot of, uh, you were kind of fucked, so I didn't really want to run that risk. But overall, really good list. So what were my uh, thoughts on the event as a whole? I thought it was a really well run event, surprisingly. We actually started on time, and Elysium did a really good job of TOing the event and making sure everything went smoothly, so shoutouts to her, and shoutouts to Fifth Rate for just hosting a really fun event. Uh, we definitely cannot ever have 
any sort of real competitive mindset grind set going into this event for like the future just because these sort of ban lists are just kind of dictated by just like one card uh muddy wallet just yo do you want scientists that one two three yo cards nuts but yeah like definitely it's a really fun casual event um obviously if, if you took it really competitively like you weren't gonna have fun but if you just went into this uh event with just like yo how can i build the stupidest board uh yeah it was like honestly a really fun event a shout outs to everyone who took part and yeah talk to you guys later peace <laughs>